Guys, uh, please, uh, sir, joining. If anyone have any question, please you can ask. Uh, like I was talking about uh, in terms of general uh, financial markets, but I've questions like uh, how we can utilize our data science skills to bear or effectively to the one. If we can uh, relate to data science with the financial market. Can make uh, some data driven decision. Oh, but sleep, your voice is not audible, okay? Like it's very low, so any chance you can actually increase it up a bit? Okay, actually, I'm using uh, some headphone, I think, so I'll take some okay. Yeah, you can, you know, ask it via the chat box, okay? That works too. No, yeah, actually, yeah, I, 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 I use that uh, his question. Just he want to ask that, um, like, uh, okay, uh, how we they uh, apply apply data science on the financial market and the understanding the financial. Channel. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, now. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to ask a question about uh, database journalism. Um, I want to know as to what the scenario right now is, as in how um, uh, uh, friendly the market is towards you know uh, someone who is interested in making a career towards database journalism. And if uh, how someone would approach, you know, getting started into this field. Okay, so that's actually an interesting question. Okay, and once we open the floor for the question, okay, uh, I would want you to be the first one to ask that question. Okay, uh, does that work? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, uh, these guys. Uh... Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's my my apology. There's one call I could I had to take it. So. Oh, no worries, sir. No worries, sir. So, what I was telling you so, essentially, um, essentially, you talk about stock market. I, you, when you say market, it's primarily taken at equity market, but then you, uh, there are stock, there are, if you talk about different asset classes, then equity, gold, um, real estate, and debt. These are the, these are the four asset classes, primarily, uh, crypto and etc. They are dead anymore. So, anyway, so we'll, that um, you tell me when to start we'll discuss about markets in general and also the uh, as a actor from the academic world if, if you want to get into the financial sector etc what are the things and including financial journalism and uh, then it will all free for questions etc is it okay yes sir that sounds wonderful uh, seven it is seven uh, oh six so if you want me to start then we can continue to eight oh six or eight oh ten maximum eight oh fifteen okay okay eight fifteen uh, you tell me when to start uh, yes sir so we'll, just, we'll be starting just in a minute sir okay yeah yeah you 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 yeah, all right sir. you can start the way you want it so hello good evening everyone and welcome to Nam the first and why not's exciting webinar in well that is the investing in future with our esteemed guest, Mr. Tamal Bandhupadhyay. I'm Mayank Jaswal with my friend Tamajit Sadhukan, the host for today's session. Our guest will be talking about how to understand financial markets and to make informed decisions. With a trailblazing career adorned with prestigious awards such as the Ramanath Goenka Award and Tata Literature Live Award, along with that, he's the consulting editor for the Business Standard newspaper and LinkedIn's top voice of 2019. So join us as Mr. Bandhupathya share his wealth of knowledge and experience offering valuable insight into the world of financial market. So everyone give a huge round of applause for Mr. Tamal Bandhupathya. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. So well, do we start? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, yeah, very good evening. And 
welcome to this uh, uh, whatever little talk what do you call it and, and then followed by discussion so let's not make it a long talk it will be very boring so i will probably take uh, 20 minutes odd um, to give a general overview on the two subjects that uh, uh, you spoke about uh, and then uh, we'll have a uh, free flowing uh, conversation i don't know what is the arrangement you have like anybody can ask a question or some uh, there'll be a question bo- box and you will pass on the questions to me that's up to you uh-huh. right uh, that is your arrangement so uh, let me, and how many of you are there uh so it's 116 of us okay. including you okay sir so uh, let's talk about you said about um, uh, taking investment decision in markets and all so Uh, at a time when you are talking about, uh, if you see in newspaper every day the Nifty and the two indices, uh, VSC Sensex and Nifty Fifty going up and up and up. Uh, <laughs> so you don't know where is the end. You uh, know, it's uh, is the and then there have been talks. You will find that there is a segment saying that, well, this is not the this uh, this this is. Uh, exuberance may not continue on the other hand uh, you will talk you will see people are talking about uh, that uh, no we there is no end to it we can go uh, we can go um, ahead i mean the markets can move ahead more so where where in lies the truth uh, i think it's very very difficult even even the best of investors actually don't know but you know when you see the market you uh, we don't see market in isolation uh, we see uh, in the context of the macroeconomic scenario so in that sense if you see what is india doing we are relatively well, well placed i am not getting into the context of uh, you know becoming a 5 trillion economy and so on and so forth uh, but among the large economies we are the fifth largest um, we have overtaken uk Uh, then the various reports will become second, will become third, will become fourth. Let's not get into it. As of now, um, we are overtaking UK, and we are the uh, among the large economies. We are the fastest growing economy. Uh, that's one part of it. So it's not like during COVID time the economy shrank, uh, like many other countries and all. But we have got back. Uh, we have got back pretty well. Um, so on the fiscal side if you see uh, both on the fiscal and monetary side here yeah, we are much better off than many other countries uh, even on the inflation uh, we, yes we saw inflation pretty high but uh, again as we speak the june inflation was higher than the may inflation driven by food tomato etc but still we have not done badly we have not done badly if you look at what's happening in us what's happening in uk what's happening in many other countries we are not done Uh, as you know that during the covid time uh, our interest rate uh, went down to historic low 4% uh, and then we started raising it uh, we are slightly slow uh, 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 2022 may we started raising the rate suddenly and as we speak uh, we have probably seen the peak of interest rate 6.5 in technically what you call it terminal rate so we we may not go ahead uh, we may not nay i would rather say we will not uh, see any more interest rate ra- uh, rise we have we have reached the peak where we should have now will it come down definitely not uh, not not in the near future not in next two months like for instance there will be august policy no not 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 in august not probably in october not probably in december we need to watch out and all so what happened is then you know india follows a uh, flexible inflation targeting now what is the flexible inflation targeting which is 4% and plus minus 2 percentage point meaning inflation come down to as as low as 2% and inflation we can tolerate it as much as 6% i repeat 4% plus minus 2% now what was happening during the covid time and even last year like if we are we exceeded 6% many on many many occasions and reserve bank of india need to tell the parliament if we if we exceed 10% for more than 3 quarters which reserve bank of india had tell had told the parliament why we have exceeded and what are the what are the uh, steps rbi would take etc that's one one story uh, but now we have come back from 6% and there is to be a thinking in certain quarter that if we are below 6 we are good enough so essentially uh, there is a push for 
shifting the goalpost like why are you talking about 4% that 6% is good enough but thankfully reserve bank of india uh, governor uh, sakthikant das and and the rbi itself they are they are repeatedly saying that no 4% is the goal we need to bring it down to 4% in fact as we speak uh, if you guys are following rbi rbi uh, no comes out with a bulletin every month bulletin the previous month bulletin comes this month so the june bulletin came released last year, yesterday on july and then the, in the, there is a overview of the economy and there at the end it says that inflation we are extremely vigilant about inflation we will continue to fight it so which means that from may to june uh, instead of after inflation coming down for 3 months in february march uh, in april uh, march uh, april and may june it has risen and our perception is it will rise again in july and august so rbi will not give up its fight against inflation so it means the tight monetary policy will continue now it's good uh, it's good uh, so that on the monetary uh, on the financial side as i said uh, uh, on the on the mac what is macroeconomy macroeconomy mean how are we con- are we aware of uh, uh, containing inflation is there determination to contain inflation because as you know inflation is very important inflation erodes the value of money for instance if you have a 100 rupee today now if you have a 6% interest rate then your 100 rupee if you keep it under your pillow it becomes 94 rupee next year it remains 100 rupee but the buying capacity becomes 94 rupee now if you keep it with the with the bank and you earn 6% interest rate then 100 rupee remains 100 rupee not 106 rupees because of the inflation erodes our buying capacity and i am not getting into the tax etc when you earn 6% interest rate on bank then again if you need you need to pay tax on that it becomes less etc so inflation is a great enemy of of us it erodes our purchasing power it's very very important to fight inflation and keep inflation in check now rbi is not giving up the fight that's a good part of it second which is if you see the fight is our fight is almost over in the sense we have reached a terminal rate which means 6.5% the rate will not rise any more but rbi will be cautious rbi will not cut the rate soon only when rbi is convinced that inflation is come to close to 4% or so then it will start cutting the rate we might we might see it in the next year but as we speak the next fomc meeting in us us which is us federal reserve's uh, rate setting body like in india we have mpc monetary policy committee next fomc meeting will hike the rate again so in terms of inflation fighting we are better off than many countries in terms of growth we are better off than many countries and um, because of these two factors our and and third factor is this uh, uh, you see the corporate world corporate world has deleveraged itself you know uh, i'm uh, uh, i'm not let's not use any jargon which means what i want to say is this there was a time when the indian corporations indian companies they 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 were heavily uh, indebted they took lot of money in there there's a lot of debt in their book that's called over leverage you know which they they could not could not even they were not able to um, uh, service those debt so now but during this covid time etc what happened is this these guys have uh, you know uh, they have they have deleveraged themselves so that's the corporate world is very good health and um, equally important if not more the banking system is very very good there was a time as you are ever you are a student of finance in 2015 16 17 18 we are going through a very bad patch our uh, gross npa of the banking system was more than 10% and it was it was terrible i mean rbi did a some special audit it's called aqr asset quality review during raghuram rajan's time and then they force the all the banks to come out with their npa numbers and you see some of the banks had npa of 1/3 30% of their balance sheet 25% of their balance sheet like a bank like say uh, idbi uco uh, indian overseas bank these are three names come to my mind they're all 25% plus gross npas were there which means 1/4 of their assets were bad but as we speak as we speak today Uh, if you see the 2023 bank balance sheet, they are pretty good. 
आई मीन देर दिस्टोरिक हाई द पब्लिसिटी ऑफ बैंक बैंक नेट प्रॉफिट इज वन ट्रिलियन प्लस वन लैख करोड़ प्लस मेनी ऑफ द बैंक have posted profit which is the best in the history like state bank of india 50000 crore plus now their gross npa their their net np is now 1% and gross np also a uh, decade and low and all so and they are all well capitalized so what is happening uh, we have a macroeconomic stability we have not inflation very low or contained but fight against inflation we have not given up at the same time there is no threat of interest rate hike any more corporate india is deleveraged uh, they don't have too much of debt in on their books and banking sector which is a proxy for economy which actually you know uh, helps economy to grow is in a very good health they are they have uh, they are they are adequately capitalized their bad loans have been cleaned up so on and so forth so all this put together makes india a sweet spot what we call it it's a good one and then uh, um, that's our own strength and we are also getting uh, added by the fact that the china continues to have a problem so uh, many of the investors which are focusing on china at this point of time they are diverting money to india so what happens you know the in in when you talk about the stock market now what is the stock market for that matter any market is the supply and demand is the supply and demand i mean it's like air ticket you will find that you want to buy air ticket there's no there's no fixed cost there is there's no fixed rate i mean um, you can buy the same ticket at x and, and sometime at double x sometime at triple x like as we speak the that so many cricket matches in ahmedabad i i saw that and so delhi ahmedabad tickets apparently uh, apparently for those matches etc now three or four or five times uh, increased So because it's all demand supply now market is also demand supply now uh, if the demand goes up which means what is the demand demand from the investors now who are the investors we have a set of investors which is in india within india which is uh, uh, the mutual fund etc and the other uh, investors uh, because still retail we have gone into retail our uh, retail penetration has gone up much but still retail is not as much as we should have but during the covid time etc the retail participation and then we have the overseas investors now overseas investors in the beginning of the year they have an allotment how much money will you get into what market etc they are the main drivers of the market etc now those overseas investors many of them are actually increasing their india exposure limit and many of them are instead of coming to going to china they are coming to india so all these factors putting a, a sort of thing india is becoming a sweet spot now will it will it carry on for ever certainly not uh, we need to if you are talking about understanding market that's a separate story if you are talking about investing in market that's a separate story like as we speak there's a bank which is called utkarsh bank which had this ipo last week now this ipo is ipo is subscribed uh, 100 times more it's one of the highest uh, subscribed ipo in the recent time. now why it has been subscribed um, so so much of time because its pricing is very good i think it's 25 rupees etc uh, it's talking about technically it's called one time book one time book uh, is a technical term uh, it could have gone to two time or three times meaning it could have it could have raised the pricing much more but it has not done so so something it has done a very smart job it's actually leaving something for the investors on the table so which is why Uh, there is so much of demand i think some segment has gone 75 times some segment has gone 50 times there there are different segment no retail uh, hni then institutions etc etc so overall it has it has a phenomenal response now does that mean the all ipos will go this way and does that mean you invest in all ipos and where do you, where, where do you invest etc etc that's a separate story altogether like again in, as an investors you have to think that whether you are investing in an ipo or you are investing in a company what if if it sounds like a puzzle then i am i am demystifying it investing in an ipo meaning you know that this ipo will list at a good rate like if i am putting in 10 rupee this ipo probably will 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 be listed at 15 rupees or 18 rupees so i am getting uh, 50% or 80% uh, on on day 1 etc but this company may not have 
a very bright future so there there you are in investing in ipo so what your job will be you invest if you get allotment you make money and you exit on the same day listing day or the next day or third day whatever it is you don't you don't remain uh, you don't stay invested and then there are companies where you invest in the company not in the ipo so ipo may be uh, you you have invested in ipo on the first day it may not uh, you may not uh, it has gone up much but in the long medium to long run this company do well and same about the buying the secondary market so what are the things what are the things where you where you actually uh, do well um, as an investors you need to see the a of course business model etc and b is the is the corporate governance you know typically if you see like a like an hdfc or hdfc bank or say um, a, a lnt or say mahindra and mahindra tata companies etc etc so you you see the one of the key factors which a company do well uh, a company do well is of course the business model uh, but the equally important is this the corporate governance if there is an issue with the corporate governance you should stay away so these are all and you should stay away also the speculation driven stocks because you don't know i mean uh, if there are stocks is going up and going i i don't like to name uh, any stock but there are actually you know you 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 manage well uh, and that's how you you make it an optics you create a situation where your stock market go up uh, stock price go up but at some point of time it crashes and you and me like retail investors you uh, you, you become a loser so you don't know so not not uh, there are some people who understands when to enter the market and there are very few people who understand actually when to exit the market so that's that's very very critical you know at a retrospect you say oh god I, had i stayed invested i would have made so much of money because you exited or you said oh god conversely i should have got out i would have made money much uh, you know theoretical i am saying you you get into a company at 10 rupees now you quit at 30 rupees and 5 years down the line it becomes actually 100 rupees then you tell why did i quit at 30 rupees i had a straight back i should have made much more money 100 10 rupees become 100 rupees again you got into a, a 10 uh, company at 10 rupees and it it <coughs> it got it was is getting into 70 80 rupees you wanted more you did not sell uh, and then it crashed to again 10 rupees or even less than that then you said oh god why shouldn't i quit so the the expression is the same oh god i i should not have quit i should have stayed invested and oh god i why did i quit i should have stayed invested so trust you me nobody in the world knows you cannot time the market you cannot i mean market doesn't listen to you you cannot time the market there is always an element of risk involved and all uh, it's very critical when you when you enter the market when i say market i mean in particular buying a particular stock and it's more critical when you exit so it needs you need to be actually if you are an investors you need to actually you should understand the company where you are investing you should understand the business model where you are investing and you should understand and be convinced about the corporate governance now you have seen a, a company like say paytm uh, one or zomato one or nike one etc You no know, there is so much of fanfare etc but ultimately those who have invested uh, they are still ruining the fact that yeah at some uh, like paytm for instance right like, even it's, it it is not yet even got the ipo price and zomato went up it has gone down and all so you don't know whether what is the business model is it sustainable or not so these are the some of the uh, new economy stocks that's the problem lies uh, that um, you know there is so much of there is so much of focus on the valuation then creating value again it sounds uh, it sounds like puzzle but this is a, this is a two different thing altogether as a company i am creating value it's one thing and as a company i am creating valuation is another thing so there are companies i would i would we have discussed a few names etc they are more instead of <coughs> creating value it's valuation which means the market cap going up and all and people get carried away 
and then at some point it says that you find that no company is, does not have any value so much much value at least so there is a very distinction between value and valuation you need to be careful about it so it's not you know you need to you actually you need to eat and drink and breathe and sleep uh, companies if you want to be a good investors you just can't like stock market is going up so there you put the money or here say so and so is saying re stock le lo that's not the way to do it if you don't understand probably uh, the best way to um, invest in the market that the, that's the uh, in the equity uh, in the through the uh, mutual fund and as you speak uh, the aum asset under management of, of the mutual fund is at historic high so it does not necessarily mean that as, as an investor i need to put in money uh, directly in stock a b c d e i can put in money in the right kind of mutual fund and there uh, you they they will invest on our behalf and these mutual funds are allowed to invest even overseas so a mutual fund will be invest uh, suppose say in in amazon or apple uh, kind of things and all so uh, in the in some market is a very tricky thing uh, as i said entering in the market is difficult at what time exit is in more difficult and it's a whole time job where you need to understand and feel the pulse of it uh, don't don't get carried away by the valuation part see the value and the value comes from the right kind of business model uh, the the character of the people who run the show the corporate governance the strength of the board so on and so forth uh, and then of course there are externalities and there is wave like uh, tech technology companies or whatever it is you call it there or there will be some time it will go up and it will go down uh, so on and so forth uh, that's a, that's a global demand and then there are so much of external factors on which we do not have any control but the fact is you have to keep your eyes and ears open otherwise you no know, best way is to go through mutual fund and see what are the best uh, look at the look at the way the profile of the fund like some of the companies some of the mutual fund are there are multiple fund there are balanced fund there are debt fund there are equity fund there are small stocks fund there are mid stock uh, mid mid cap fund there are large cap funds then there are the equity proxy there is a um, indice proxy fund lifty fund sensex fund etc etc now when the time is good everything is good but you don't know when the time gets bad because there are external external issues like uh, uh, covid we have come out but uh, even before we could come out of covid the russia ukraine uh, air yeah, war has been there uh, so things are it's a, it's a very volatile continuum it's a volatility and and then you don't know actually tomorrow what's going to happen and it's a very integrated world uh, um, us federal reserve holds even though people are talking about that uh, you know uh, we are Um, decoupled ourselves and we are on our own but it's not correct uh, still uh, us uh, us dollar is the dominant currency in the world the biggest reserve currency so on and so forth uh, so we need to be very careful about the macroeconomic scenario in general and micro factor that's a particular company now apart from equity there are other asset classes you you know that only one is real estate but india for multiple reasons the new norms not new norm any more the rera etc has come up the cash economy has gone down dramatically so real estate in most of the uh, most of the markets are not uh, no it's it's a plateaued it's not going up any more so at some point people used to invest lot in the real estate i'm talking about 10 years back now that's not the case any more other part is the gold where uh, one can which people do invest gold is the biggest uh, way to fight um, uh, to fight inflation uh, that's a historically gold is the weapon to fight inflation and you know that india has done reserve bank of india comes out with gold bonds where you don't actually buy buy gold the the metal but you go, you buy a proxy paper gold bond and there you invest i think there is certain lock in period for 5 years or so you get interest uh, minimum some interest and then 5 years down the line if the gold this is linked to the gold prices if the gold prices have gone up your investment will go up to that extent it has gone down it will be uh, to that extent so gold again that proxy paper it's one investment people do uh, and finally there's a debt now there is corporate debt mm, 
you know, uh, there are NCDs, etc. That uh, that is there. Then there is, of course, banks fixed deposit. As we speak, all the banks are finding it very difficult on the liability front because certainly post COVID, their credit pickup has been phenomenal. Uh, after it, when it's a decadal high, 15% credit pickup, but the uh, deposits are not picking it. So there is fight among the banks, uh, and this, which is why the deposit rates are going up. Now some of the small finance banks are offering. I think about nine percent, as as high as nine percent, and of course uh, others are like seven percent, seven and a half, eight percent kind of thing. This kind of fixed deposit uh, rate we have not seen for many many years, and in fact, if you talk to very seasoned bankers who have been in the profession for thirty odd years and all, they are saying we have not seen that. Uh, if if you are in Bombay, if you get out of the airport and go on the Western Express Highway. You will you will you will see big bill big boards of various companies, uh, Yes Bank and IDBI Bank and Bank of India, etc. etc. Uh, saying that we are offering this much good coming to us. So at this point of time, even fixed deposit also a good good thing. So as popularly people say that don't put all your eggs in the one basket. If you have hundred rupees, you decide, uh, and it all depends on your risk taking ability. Which all again linked to your age, etc. Somebody who is 20 year old will be far, or 22 years old like your guys, or 25 year old like you people, you will have a far more risk taker than somebody uh, who is senior citizen or who is uh, 50 year old and all. So depending on your risk appetite, depending on your capability, uh, you need to um, you need first of all you need to save, which is that uh, save is nothing to risk. Nothing to do with your risk management. Save is your ability. What's your lifestyle and how much you earn? And the money what you save is you need to figure out how do we do it? Uh, do I if don't if you keep it the entire thing in bank deposits, then it does not make any sense. It's very, very uh, stable. You will not lose anything, but you will not gain anything. So then you have to figure out what do I do? Do I put it a little bit up in gold? Do I do I do I have apart from my? <coughs> is there any Geographically, any spot, any pocket where you stay, where the, there is a possibility of real estate going high, so would you buy a flat there or land there, etc., etc., and then will you put in little money in the stock market, and then if you do in the stock market, will you do it uh, directly or through mutual fund, so on and so forth. Even government bond also, uh, yeah, the retail investors can buy government bond again, depending on it's again. You know, the, the more you look for safety, the less will be the return. So there is a there is a, uh, there is a balance between safety and return. You need to figure out. As far as bank, as far as bank FDs are concerned, as you know, there is a there is a thing called um, you know insurance. Uh, uh, our all our deposits are insured, but it's up to five lakh. So which means if Mr. A keeps ten lakhs in a bank. He can only get he or she can get only uh, he can get only five lakh. But there are ways of getting it more. Like for instance, uh, if Mr. A puts in money as Mr. A, uh, then it's five lakh. Then his wife her, his wife can put in money and Mr. A can be number two uh, person in the joint account. Then it could be another five lakh. Then his son or daughter can have another five lakh, another five lakh. So depending on the family, you can have up to 20, 25 lakh. In uh, the DICGC, that's the deposit insurance covered, even if a bank fails. But as you know, in India, since 1990s, no bank has been allowed to fail. You know, whether it's Yes Bank or in some three years back, 2020, or recently the PMC, uh, no bank has been allowed to fail. Uh, so typically, banks will not fail. Uh, so uh, you can mix and match. You can have it like say bank like say HDFC or ICICI or Axis or buying and apart from State Bank of India and others, they will never fail. But some of the relatively not so strong bank, but offering more. So if you are if you want if you don't want to take risk, then you keep up to five lakh, and then it can be again ten lakh, fifteen lakh with others as well. So that's the way to do it, uh, but don't don't put uh, put all the eggs in the basket. Uh, but uh, I repeat before I conclude that uh, India is in a sweet spot. Our macroeconomic scenario is good. Our financial system is uh, pretty pretty good. Our corporate India also um, deleverage. 
so everything it's it's pretty good at this point of time and externally as i said uh, the china's weakness also helps to the because at the end, and and one thing i did not say rupee also behaving pretty well you know on the currency front also uh, it's not that there is a sharp depreciation of rupee rupee had depreciated but then uh, over it now within uh, um, as we speak it has been doing pretty well vis-a-vis -vis the dollar so there is and our we have a central bank which is not give up, giving up a fight against inflation which means interest rate will not come down but interest rate will not go up also we have reached the terminal rate so all this put together um, it's a pretty pretty good scenario as far as india is concerned um, from the investors point of view uh, as far as other thing uh, we discuss i mean i am expected to say about how to enter into the financial market as a as a journalist or reporter or even as a banker and all so uh, you know it's a basically a financial sector is a very dynamic sector and there you need to run to remain where you are uh, i don't know whether i have been able to communicate because what i am trying to say is this things are things are things can change dramatically uh, uh, and there are because it's a very integrated world uh, and geopolitics plays a very critical role here so you we need you need to be if you want to take the plunge in the financial sector as a writer as a commentator as an analyst you need to literally burn midnight oil uh, because nothing to do with us something happening somewhere like say us fomc meeting every fomc meeting we those who are who are in the financial sector we spend uh, um, that night awake to to watch what is happening at fmc what, what they have done because what they have done in us that that becomes a critical role if, if the us hikes the rate then what happened is this rupee become rupee comes under pressure and then so on and so forth because what happens the <coughs> money like water goes water flows downward if you, you know if you if you throw water on a on a on a level the water will go wherever it is the little lower side Uh, that's it similarly money will flow wherever the return is more so what happened is this when the us hike the interest rates what happens is that then it becomes the us interest us uh, return becomes more so the money uh, then the entire equation globally where the money will go will change the rupee vis-a-vis -vis dollar the relationship will change so on and so forth that's only one part of it so similarly again russia ukraine something has happened it will impact again in china something has happened it will impact so that there is there is geopolitics there is a multiple uh, regulators in various countries um, uh, even though we claim that we are decoupled we are not uh, so all these things we need to we need to keep it keep it uh, keep it keep it um, uh, keep in mind and to do that it's not a it's not a job like you know you start at 10 o'clock and you end at 5 o'clock and you come home and you relax have a cup of tea and then have a dinner and go to bed no if you are in the financial sector you need to <laughs> uh, i'm not scaring you but you need to keep your eyes and ears open 24 by 7 what's happening where not in india alone anywhere in the globe which can have an impact because these are all markets are all integrated you know you can see the, what is the rupee dollar movement the currency market which is the rupee dollar movement or the debt market which is the 10 year uh, 10 year 10 year yield whatever it is and the equity market so everything is 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 linked because you know as i said the foreign in institutional investors the fii's play a very critical role here so it all depends on if the fii whether this fii flow is high or low and if the fii's flow is low then again you see the stock market boa whatever you seeing the going up and all it will not it it will not it will not continue so everything can change uh, um, uh, at any point of time so if you are a commentator if you are a, uh, if you are uh, in the industry and if you take your job seriously you need to be a praise of what's happening everywhere so you need to keep it keep a very close watch so that's 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 very critical and i'm repeating that it's 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 like 
you have to keep on running to stay where you are uh, and if you are looking for a banking as a, as a job uh, trust to me if you want to become a, a good banker it you have to take it as a very boring it is a very boring business only then you can succeed otherwise if you are an adventurous then you will you will bound to fail in historically whoever has got into big adventure want to have a growth which is overnight etc it's not so banking as a business is very different from any any anything else uh, number one is you are dealing with public money it's my money your money everybody else's money it's not so so the difference between banking and any other business is money is the raw material say so a cement factory cement is the raw material a steel factory steel uh, a chemical a chemical or a fmcg oil and etc etc or food etc that's a different thing but here is a business where money is the raw material money is the raw material and money is the finished product and whose money it's a public money which is why if you see in india's case like the bank the options what happens you know, who who becomes a who can float a bank now you see when they auction for the telecom auction the highest bidder gets the gets the mandate that i will i will become a telecom operator or gets into some coal mining etc the highest bidder but for banking it's not the highest bidder reserve bank of india decides which is the how much money you need to bring is it first it was 100 crore in 90s then it became 500 crore and 1000 crore etc etc so anybody and everybody who can have that money can apply for a bank you can't say that no 1000 crore you are asking i'll give you 5000 crore 10000 crore give me a bank license no no that's not the case it cannot be thing and the second part of this so you it brings whoever has that that money the capacity they can be a license seeker and then rbi goes for it to check fit and proper are you capable of running a bank again i am saying you know because it's a it's a public money you are dealing with it's not your own money this is only one this is the only business in the world where money is raw material and money is finished product you just finished product you do in a different way in terms of Uh, auto loan in terms of home loan in terms of corporate loan in terms of working capital loan in terms of um, project loan in terms of personal loan these are all different products but raw material and the finished product is the same and again you see it is the most leverage business you know i am trying to deorganize and become make it as simple as possible it's the most leverage business now what does it mean as you know if at the bank what happens is this if i am running a bank what is real money which means the depositors money what is my finished product is loan which means i give the loan to people so i i take 100 rupees from mr a and i give that money to mr b or give not that money suppose 100 uh, to to two men two three four people about 20 rupees 30 rupees 20 rupees etc etc now my cost <clears throat> of 100 rupees is suppose uh, average cost is 6% and my earning on this 100 rupees which i give it loan suppose 10% or 11% so which is called this is called nim net interest margin i am enjoying a net interest margin of 4% or 5% depending on the difference between what i pay to the depositors and what i what i earn from the loan now this nim covers my operational costs operational costs because um, i have to keep the um, uh, wage i have to give uh, salary and wages to people i have to i have to run so many branches and they have the cost their their electricity their uh, uh, their whatever you call it ac and so on and so forth everything is there and then so many other keeping a chairs giving locker etc etc so this operational cost so that 100 rupee 106 rupee i am giving to depositors 110 rupee i am getting from the loan that 4 rupees within 4 rupees i have to keep all my operational cost maybe one or two rupees then i give the 2 rupee i i give the 2 rupee earning that's my profitability is it that simple no it's not that simple within 100 rupees i have to keep as we speak 4 and 1/2 rupees with reserve bank of india in the form of crr 
which is called uh, cash reserve ratio on which i don't earn any interest which means i am i am paying deposit rate on 100 rupees but i am actually getting 95 and half rupees i am not getting 100 rupees this 4 and half rupees i am keeping with rbi is a caution if i if any problem is there rbi uses that money so that's one part of it then i have to buy government bonds for 80 rupees 18 rupees okay and that government bond does not give me some uh, too much of uh, too much of interest so that's that's not i I'll, i'll earn as much as i can give it a loan but i have to give 18 rupees at least so which means out of 100 rupees i am left with 95 rupees out of 95 rupees i am giving 18 rupees to uh, for, for bond buying the rest i am some 78 rupees or 77 rupees i am left with now within this 77 rupees again 40% i have to give it to the private sector which is to the farmers to low cost housing uh, under privileged section etc etc and after doing all these things i am whatever the money is left with me that i can give it as auto loan home loan all the retail loan as well as the corporate loan etc so it's not that simple that's one part of it you have to always continually figure out how to make the balance and how to still on good money and second and the most critical part of what i said what is the most um, why the bank is different from any other business apart from money raw material and money is the finished product other part is this here the most leverage business because we have something called capital adequacy ratio which we need about 9% now what does it mean what all the regulatory requirement i said you no know, crr i give keep money uh, for and a half rupees rbi SLR, which is the statutory liquid ratio, I bond, I buy bond at least eighteen rupees. Private sector loan, I give forty percent loan to all these underprivileged. Apart from all these things, the very critical part in bank is this: I have to keep a capital adequacy ratio of nine percent. What does that mean? For hundred rupee giving loan, I must have nine rupee capital. I cannot afford to have less than nine rupee capital. Then I cannot run a bank. now you imagine a situation i gave a 100 rupee loan to 10 guys 10 rupees and one guy does not pay up it become non performing assets which 10 rupees so that kills my entire capital because as i have said 9 rupee capital i need so 10% if 10% of my npa 10% of my assets gone bad then my capital gets loaded then my banks go belly up goes belly up i cannot run a bank so that's that's the most critical part and that's the, apart from dealing with public money etc it's a very highly leveraged business and as i said for any reason 10% of your loan goes bad so which is why all this you know that government kept on recapitalizing public sector banks and that is your money my money every budget they used to talk about lakhs of crores which will go to the public sector bank without without that all the public sector or most of the public sector bank would have died by this time so that's that's the banking business which means uh, as i said there is no adventure it's a very boring business you have to keep it like it's a it keep it as a very boring business you keep money you take money from a you give money from b give that money to b and you make sure that your money is does not go bad you earn your interest from everybody and everything is in place so those whoever has gone into adventurism i am not getting into any any so which is very different from as an investor in equity market in in an investor in equity market uh, as i as i said depending on your age and risk taking ability you decide and choose uh, what you want to do with your money because that is your own money you invest you earn so on and so forth but when you are running a bank it is you are you are dealing with my money and others money you have to approach this not as an adventurer but as a sort of very boring business and that's the difference between uh, banking uh, and any other business so i think uh, largely uh, i don't know whether i'm i'm able to answer what you are looking for but um, that's the kind of thing uh, i end here we have already yeah 7:00 i spoke a lot i end here maybe 15 minutes up to 8:15 so 17 minutes uh, 17 18 minutes any question i'm happy to answer Yes, so we do have a question. Hello.
Okay. Yes, Simon, go on. Yes, sir. So I want to take a study loan of thirty-five lakhs, and uh, is there any government schemes I would be eligible for? And uh, so, what is the best kind of loan I should go for? I mean, which thing? No, this uh, th there's no government scheme. There's no government scheme for study loan. Education loan every bank um, gives, and uh, you need to you need to reach out. You need to bargain how much money, etc. And they typically they need this sort of collateral, which is a backer, is a guarantee. Uh, your dad, etc., needs to be a co-borrower. That's the I mean, he has to lend his or her uh, support to you, and that's the way. But there are certain education loan companies. Like one is this, uh, which used to be run by HGFC. It's called HGFC Credila. Uh, you go to the internet. It just HGFC had to sell 90% stake because of the merger. HGFC could not hold that uh, company anymore. So that is one company which approaches is very different. A, it does not have any cap. It 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 gives you as much money as possible, and it also does all kind of combination permutation. That what is the possibility of what kind of what kind of um, study you are undertaking, and then what is the kind of job opportunities there. So it does kind of very intense study, and it's a very different from any other company, any other uh, education loan giver. Uh, so you can. Um, uh, you can approach uh, this HDFC Credila. I don't know what is the new name. It just got sold. They approach education loan in a very different way. Otherwise, public sector banks and all, uh, they will go through your, I think, some kind of collateral they look for. And as far as my understanding is concerned, certain states actually have certain scheme. Like West Bengal, for instance, I know there is a scheme where uh, they give some, uh, through the, there is a window where you approach, go through the, but that's not kind that kind of money, not 35 lakh or not, but few lakhs they give to the state. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's, that okay, really sir. helps. Sir, uh, the next question, uh, the next question, Veena Razaram. Yeah, so I wanted to ask a little about uh, database journalism in India. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, as somebody who wants to get into that field, I wanted to know how prevalent it is uh, in various news houses as well as how somebody would you know approach getting into this particular field no it's um, uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, almost every news uh, every media house has uh, has this segment now no uh, how the media uh, media houses operate so one is one is the news which is happening like hfc hfc bank merger happens there's some right. conference happening etc et other thing is this uh, the database thing like uh, mm, so that one person who's a who's a reporter who does the job who goes to the uh, press conference and he says that Deepak Parekh has said this or so and so has said this analyst said this and all uh, then there is some other segment who actually crunches the data and sees that uh, well after this uh, post merger what is the what will be the market cap of this uh, the combined entity. Uh, where would we be in the global scale? Is it the third or fourth or fifth? And what yeah. does it mean um, on 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 each and everything the database data thing? So whether it's what's happening in the stock market, whether what's happening in the um, in the in the debt market, or what's happening in certain companies. Uh, so each and every, um, almost every, like whether it's Economic Times or Business Standard or Mint, um, uh, they all have the database journalism. Uh, I think uh, all have the database journalism. Now, typically what happens is people, uh, how the journalism, how the journalists start, um, there are some certain journalist school, uh, with Asian College of Journalism, and uh, etc. In Chennai, there's a one, in Bangalore, there's a one, etc. So, uh, people do study there, and they also have uh, this kind of stream where you can learn um, under the guidance of the teachers, and then at the end of the day, the camp at the end of the year, the campus recruitment happens, and then the various business papers go there and pick up. It's all business paper as well as political papers as well as TV journalists, etc., etc. Other part is this approaching uh, a newspaper directly uh, with your CV, etc. That I am. So if you have a kind of finance background, uh, if you are from IIM or some other places, etc. Um, um, they may consider, they may call you and get a test, etc. done and typically they put you in one year um, 
training period, etc. Meaning as an apprenticeship, and they watch your progress, and that's how you move. But um, database journalism is very, very um, important and very prevalent at this point of time. Along with the newspaper reporters, the database journalists are also there. But it's a basically a little backroom work. You don't, okay. you know, you don't get to go out and meet people. You just data crunch because the newspaper has the access to say Bloomberg data terminal and so many others and all. So you um, you source the data from there and then you crunch the data. Right, right. Uh, so uh, just a follow up, what about long form articles and uh, research based work that happens? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. again, again, there's a, uh, th that's also very important and many, new, many newspapers, uh, um, have been following this uh, thing. one of the newspapers is my old newspaper where i am one of the founding members is mint they also believe yeah. in long form articles so it's all you know it's going beyond he said they said journalism as i said like typically right. one said that something just happened you know uh, sensex has reached there nifty has reached there or something something but then there are other interesting stories which are long term stories which takes time uh, which which is like you 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 spend a lot of time you yeah. you meet people you uh, you invest uh, your time and energy and meeting people etc etc and research so what happened is um, it's it's i'm meaning it's uh, the harsh reality is this in indian newspaper the kind of investment it needs to do in journalism, in uh, journalists, uh, not too many people can afford that. Like in, if you look at business, if you look at say Financial Times or say The Economist and all, one right. reporter may spend one week or 15 days or even a month for one story, you know, traveling, meeting people, and that's a huge investment. But here what happens is this, it's not, uh, even the, the, there's not that kind of capital, that kind of money, the promoters don't have so you treat them like a corporate houses but they are not well capitalized they don't have the kind of money so they would like uh, guys to uh, you know sort of um, give a story two to two stories a day three stories a day story is a yeah. story meaning the reports so there right. are not too many but every every i think most of the newspaper houses also nurture one two three four like very few people as kind of long form writers uh, which okay. are which adds value to the newspaper. Okay, that helps, sir. Thank you. Oh, okay. Next, next stop, Ketan. Um, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, so my question was uh, regarding the real estate. Uh, so, earlier in the session, you uh, said something about the real estate markets and how their growth has somewhat plateaued. Uh, so I, I wanted to know uh, what are uh, the metrics or you know the basis based on which uh, you arrived to that conclusion. Uh, <laughs> what are the metrics? Meaning the data say that. No? If you look at the, so, you look at, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing real estate markets do not have an index of sorts. No, uh, no, no. There are there are um, there are houses which track the real estate. Market. You go on the internet, and you will find that uh, uh, you will find there. Like for instance, as I said, I live in Mumbai. I, I see, I see. What's happening is the rentals are going up. Now, why rentals are going up? Because many of the old buildings are getting into redevelopment. So when the redevelopment happens, meaning what a 30 year, 40 year, 50 year old building being uh, broken down, and the new buildings are coming up. Now the say 18 or 20 or 30 families who are living there, they need to they need to be rehabilitated for next two or three years. And because they have this is their own house, their 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 job, their children's school, everything is connected nearby. So they don't want to go farther, very far away. They want to be within the next one kilometer or whatever it is, one square kilometer, which is propping up the the rental. But when it comes to real estate, I see in Bombay, the prices almost have remained the same. I mean, there is some ups and downs, but as an investment, and the, there are reasons behind it. As I said earlier, there was a lot of, it was a, primarily the cash economy was there. So now there is a sort of activism, the cash economy has gone down dramatically. 
and then there's kind of uh, the certain rules and regulations that come which is called rera re ra etc so all there there is there are a structural changes in the real estate world which was not the case one decade back so all these structural changes actually like the and then demonetization during demonetization also like that so if you see all these real estate there are real estate trackers uh, when once you go to the google everything you find at that so it's not that everywhere is it's it's working out the same but in some of the places in the more you know that the most of the many of the markets have absolutely saturated the kind of uh, return is very limited and then there are certain areas where you find return and all but as an investment class it has lost his sheen that's what i'm saying earlier uh, there was a sort of uh, you ask people who have tons of money um, they would definitely have uh, so many um, put in money in real estate but that that trend has not that that trend is no more I, i would like to believe that trend is no more there because the return from real estate is not as much as it was say 10 years back and you as in as i said you just go to the google you will find uh, there are many agencies which periodically comes out with the numbers and you will find certain um, in in uh, even in newspaper then a mr one film star has bought uh, a, um, um, a 600 square feet flat at um, 72 crore at malabar hill and somebody has bought uh, um, a 4000 square feet flat at warden road at 40 crore all these things they are all there are certain deals are there those kind of fancy houses and all but overall as an investment Uh, i would like to believe that uh, it's it's weightage in that basket of an investor has gone down okay thank you sir thank you yep yep there is no more sir a question huh? um, am i audible Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I'm re- I'm really curious about the um, about the way uh, we see investments in larger infrastructure projects, like uh, from uh, external com- uh, country and the funds like um, Canadian teacher uh, pension funds. We see something funds from Singapore as well investing in many road projects and large capital projects in India. Mm. Uh, uh, how does India? Uh, are there any indian funds like uh, we we heard about pf authority parking some money or investing something there uh, or something like gic in singapore does lic also plan to do that what's your opinion there how does that grow or does india have the market for uh, investing it in itself you know you know one of the reasons which the banking sector got into trouble is their huge exposure to the infrastructure projects and so what happened is the uh, early last decade until you know, 2001 2010 11 12 that's the time when there is a sort of uh, people say in popular parlance that there is a sort of policy paralysis overall things are not moving and then there were um, multiple issues um, uh, multiple issues like the supreme court judgment and then you know, environmental issues and all so projects were not taking off uh, so the banks have invested money and projects are not taking off now globally if you see the infrastructure projects is not financed by banks it financed by the debt market but in india uh, this is the uh, this is a very unique uh, con- uh, india is a unique country in that sense here the real estate projects are uh, uh, i mean sorry not real estate the infrastructure projects are financed by banks uh, which is not the global case they are they are all, all financed by the debt market the banks come much later now we tried multiple things like say one is this uh, take out financing what does take out financing mean that suppose a project is for 14 years somebody comes for next for the first four or five years and then somebody walks in it takes away from the balance sheet of that particular bank and then from fifth year it continues and then somebody walks in and another entity walks in on 10th year it continues like that but again it it remained in theory it did not it did not happen at all. it did not uh, this take out financing and did not happen uh, so now what is happening is 
we are focusing on we have created a company called the we when i say we meaning the government called nabfed n a b f e d the national infrastructure something something uh, which is um, mr rajkiran who was the former md and ceo of union bank he is he is the ceo of this nabfed and all this is the primarily the uh, infrastructure financing company now india is banking on we we experimented with idfc uh, many years back in 90s but it failed and then it became a sort of a bank uh, and then of course uh, there are certain things again you go to uh, uh, you, you go to internet you will find that it's called inbit it's called inbit and certain things which um, which again a kind of uh, it's uh, it's very com uh, i mean i don't want to waste time explaining that you can go uh, you, you can go in internet only you can see the reit r e i t and inbit reit and inbit these are the two these two things is a basically a kind of uh, structure how to finance real estate and all so they are um, the, they is taking care of certain road projects etc so reit and inbit Uh, they are uh, they are getting some kind of traction as we speak nafed has come uh, and the banks are getting into certain projects uh, at the second stage not at the first stage which the ideally it should be um, we, there is a lot of focus on real estate in india uh, but financing is a big problem as you know historically we had the project financing institute which is idbi ifci and icici and they were actually they had certain window when they used to get uh, uh, they used to get uh, 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 cheaper money from the government in the 90s government closed the tap so which made idbi icici ifci unviable in in that in that, um, in that um, avatar so what happened icici got merged with icici bank idbi got merged with idbi bank that concept of project financing uh, Uh, for the banks was never there they were the project financer and then the bank tried to take over and then then the banks made a mess of it and as i said globally banks don't do it but now uh, after all this clean up etc etc now we are as in read and in um, read and in read uh, you check this out these are the two things we are we, we have done then nabfed is there and also from the other investors yeah. thank you sir thank you Okay. Oh, so are we, are we open for more questions? Yes. I want to ask about. We have five more minutes. Yeah. Okay, five more minutes. Okay. Uh, so this then this basic question. Okay, where students want to know how to actually start with their financing journey, like the basic financial knowledge that they should have. So I want to ask uh, cryptocurrency. Sorry. Cryptocurrency. Let me quickly say that cryptocurrency uh, was uh, sort of. Uh, what would i say um, cryptocurrency was a wave kind of thing during the uh, during the um, covid time you will find that everybody anybody and everybody not only in the metros even in the uh, smaller towns also putting money in cryptocurrencies etc etc but reserve bank of india reserve bank of india has oh, heavily on cryptocurrency because what happened is that cryptocurrency there is no asset you know while say real estate you buy a flat the the flat price may go up or may go down in bank deposits you keep money you don't lose anything you keep on getting money in in gold you buy gold the gold prices may go up go down in stock market you buy some stock it may go up or go down but there is an underlying asset but as far as cryptocurrency is concerned there is no underlying asset it's totally i mean you call it gambling or whatever you call it or not so that's that was the problem and reserve bank of india was reserve bank of india was uh, right from uh, right from day one it was it was uh, dead against it now what is the happening is uh, there was a um, i would say there is a lobby which was which was pushing for which pushing cryptocurrency and they are talking about they were mixing cryptocurrency with blockchain now blockchain is the underlying technology of cryptocurrency and blockchain is extremely useful blockchain can be used for multiple purposes including say one of the thing which you are planning to use is this basically the you know ownership of land etc in rural india um, 
so blockchain is the underlying technology of cryptocurrency which is extremely useful and which we need but the crypto connoisseurs or the crypto or the crypto lovers etc they were confusing people by mixing blockchain with cryptocurrency they are two different things altogether blockchain is the underlying technology cryptocurrency is something else and cryptocurrency does not it's pure gambling it does not have any asset whatsoever so 100 your 100 rupee can become zero tomorrow or can become 1000 tomorrow there's no such thing so for it's it's good enough that we have we have come out and the government has also government was dilly dallying government was little ambivalent uh, but finally government also come out strictly and reserve bank of india thing and that's been the case globally also and uh, now cryptocurrency is in is been pushed to the wall think then there is no there is no, no not much of future for cryptocurrency anymore and an unsolicited advice it, i would like to i would like to tell you this this stay away from cryptocurrency because there is no future <laughs> and yeah maybe the last one uh, you said something no um, what exactly you said i i forgot something you wonder how to yeah uh, so so like the basic students okay those who actually want to start their financial journey so how should they start then a journey of what or uh, so journey as a investor or the basic financial knowledge that they should have oh well uh, i think the a is what not to do not to do is not to do is not to not to not to get into any whisper and this is a good stock buy it somebody tells you you never tells you when you say that these are the kind of thing which means you know that uh, the market is actually heading towards a crash when your auto rickshaw says sir apne yahan pe paisa dal do auto rickshaw wala says something like that or no uh, <laughs> everywhere kind of thing and all so let's not get into any rumor let's not get into any kind of here say Uh, you will get a hundred calls a day that we are guiding you, etc. etc. Not much. So one is this: you have to keep a um, keep a good. Uh, you have to be interested and keep a good track on on India on the economy, the macroeconomic factors. Meaning, what's happening in the? As I said, it's a very integrated market. What's happening in the currency market? What's happening in the debt market? What's happening in the FII flow? What's happening in the fiscal deficit, current account deficit, fight against inflation, interest rate, etc., etc., uh, and of course, what's happening in U.S. Federal Reserve, uh, so on and so forth, or or, um, or um, other eminent central banks, etc. You don't have to bother about what's happening in Chile or Indonesia um, or Myanmar, but definitely in U.K. and Euro Euro land and Asia uh, and U.K. and U.S. etc. So one is this keeping a very close watch on the macro scenario. Uh, B is at the same time uh, geo and and also at the same time the uh, geopolitical scenario. What's happening in China? What's happening in Ukraine, Russia? So that's the macro macro bit. Second bit is this uh, keep up. Uh, I mean, read the newspapers, business newspapers, uh, read uh, the news as well as the views, etc. You find out about it. And then there are. Uh, then you then uh, if you identify uh, if you identify certain stocks then you see the um, see get into their get into their website uh, you see their basic fundamental uh, things how much is as i said you have to convince about the model uh, like would you like to go for uh, one of the new economy stock which is more noise and as i said more for valuation than value then you may get feel later Uh, disappointed that oh I I should have thought about this. Uh, like for instance, their PTM. Even now, PTM is looking for a business model. Now, what can a PTM do which a bank cannot do? Now, it has it has a great marketing story. PTM is a household name. Even you go to Kashmir and Dal Lake, you will find that uh, there is a PTM thing uh, advertisement on the boat on the on the boats on the Dal Lake, etc. etc. Uh, everybody talks about it and all, but. as far as the business model is concerned i think there's they they are continuously trying to find out what is the business model uh, so we you need to figure out that and then uh, i mean just don't go by here say do a study uh, if, you, if you since you have the basic finance background do the uh, do the study see the uh, history of it uh, go to the go, uh, go to their website check their board uh, Who are the members of the board? Are they eminent people or are they not? Uh, 
uh, get into the you know these are all uh, real time uh, this come um, you just see on the cb as they been got into any in not hit by the cb on the knuckle for any misadventure anything in the past so on and so forth so it's you need to look at the business model of the i mean apart from the macro economic scenario and geopolitics that's the that's the overall background then you need to see uh, uh, also then you need to see that particular company what is their business model what's their management and what's their board and then you see their other factors like roa roe uh, business margin so on and so forth so it's a little bit of as i said one way of doing it if you are lucky somebody tells you you put in the money and then uh, you made tons of money it can happen uh, you may lose that can also happen but if you are uh, informed investors then um, the the surprise uh, uh, the could be limited that's all and most importantly as i said uh, it's nobody can time the market nobody can time the market it's uh, when you enter it's important and more important is when you when you exit so that again as i said you can't just do a coin and say shall i exit no you have to find out like certain certain stocks i am not going to any recommend any stock because i do not uh, i don't want to do that but certain stocks is as good as a fixed deposit you put in money and you forget you forget for the next 5 years 10 years 20 years it will create value you keep on getting you keep on getting uh, dividend as well as your money becomes bigger and bigger but but for certain stocks it not i mean you see like for this hdfc bank uh, it go it is gone for it 10 rupees share in 19 uh, 1994 10 rupees share now this 10 rupees share now how much it has become probably 9000 because i think 1800 something and that 10 rupee uh, face value has become 1 rupee so you have to uh, talk is it 1 rupee or 2 rupee I, I, we need to see so it probably is if it's 1 rupee then it has become 18000 And if it's one, two rupees, it become nineteen, nineteen, nine thousand. I don't remember if there's in Mona, etc., etc. But like that. So Infosys could be another stock. It has gone up like that. So there are stocks which are, as I said, um, again, I'm not recommending anything. You you need to do your own own research work and all. But there are stocks where you can stay invested for decades. Uh, like at your age, you put in money and then you continue to earn uh, dividend and. stocks will go up uh, but there are stocks which could be no it will be only for the timing for a few years there are stocks which could be full only for ipo but whatever you do take an informed decision uh, don't get into a hearsay and if you can't if you don't have the time then go through mutual fund okay so that's it so the time has been so and because of the time we won't be taking any more questions uh so so yeah. any last parting word to the students something that you want to say to them well i mean no nothing i much i don't i don't need to say anything i uh, do well for yourself stay safe only only one thing i tell everybody is this you know uh uh one thing is very critical that what we do or rather you do or i do we must enjoy what we should do that's the only way to do to become a successful professional don't get into that um, no um, x has gone there y has gone there i also need to do this or for money etc that would not take you anywhere because you know i know people uh, who earn good money but then they every time they get up in the morning they say oh god i need to go to office they don't enjoy and only 3 4 days a month they feel happy towards the end of the month and the beginning of the month that 3 4 days where the money hit the you know the money transfer hit the bank account this 3 4 days they will be happy rest of the day they will curse themselves why what i do, what i am doing here they don't enjoy at all so if you don't enjoy then you don't excel and then at some point you you give up you say no i mean i don't i don't like it. let's go to work so the other approach is what i feel is the most critical and because you are student you are much much younger than me uh, and i have been through the phase so i personally believe is this you must do what you enjoy come what may and if you enjoy then you will excel if you excel then you will not if you enjoy then it will not feel like you are working hard or you are nothing because you are enjoying it 
it become a passion and the moment it becomes a passion you are enjoying it then you excel and then if once you excel then there are too many takers for you because at the end of the day it's a market economy i want a job desperately for that reason nobody will give me a job that entity need to be convinced that i will deliver then only if i am wanted there my wanting a job is not important the company wants me that is more important so once you do what you enjoy you excel and once you excel then the people chase you and, and in other words the money start chasing you so would you work for money in the beginning looking at the money and you don't enjoy your work then at some point you you may fail if you do the other way don't look at money you do what you enjoy then you excel and then money start chasing you that's 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 what i firmly believe in that that's one part and second part of is this don't stop learning because school and college and university and whatever iit iim and all uh, that's the limited uh, they 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 the they inculcate certain basic discipline in us how to approach things and all but the actual learning starts after that after you leave your school college or iit IS, isb iim the actual learning the learning from colleagues the learning from industry the learning from reading the learning from watching learning from everything so don't stop learning uh, don't think that i know i know everything so the moment you think that the moment we stop learning at many of the bright young students and all i found that uh, because they have done academically go very good and at the later stage they don't do very well because they think that they know everything i think that's the biggest curse actually the biggest strength is this i don't know i don't know much because things are happening so fast around us we need to continue to learn otherwise we'll never be able to as i said we need to run to be where we are so that's the that's the one liner i would say in on the knowledge path you need to run continuously to be where you are i think here i end enough i've spoken so with these parting words we'll make sure that we remember these words and follow what our heart wants so that money follows us so with these parting notes sir i would really like to thank you for taking time for us and to give such valuable lessons that we actually needed for time thank you mer thank you very much for joining in so thank you have a very good evening and do do well you guys all of you okay yeah. bye 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 sir thank you sir thank you thank you bye thank you sir yeah i'm trying to okay guys so yeah. thank you for joining in everyone have a great day mayank mayank hello yeah samuel yeah ah uh, yeah yeah do you have few minutes for me yeah sure man so uh, yeah 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 i'm just a being i wanted to learn about this finance and uh, i just wanted to know what is the difference between stocks and the mutual funds i don't have any idea about it so can you if you, if you have okay uh, time, so like uh do you want me to go into the details or a basic analogy would yeah, work yeah yeah okay see man stock is like, stocks are like see if there is a particular company they issue their own stocks okay so you actually get to invest in the company directly and yeah. you get a profit out of them okay okay but okay. there are two factors okay the first thing the risk yeah since you are indulged with the company directly okay the risk yeah. are greater if the company fails that was your decision to indulge with them okay yeah. so your money fails too Correct. But in but in case of mutual funds, okay, let's say you know uh, you know me that I'm a good investor, okay, that I know how to invest. So and other people feels the same, okay. So what I do is I start my own fund and I'll start taking money from the people, okay, that okay. I'll invest on your on your behalf and I'll give you a ten percent, okay, ten percent growth rate on your principal okay. amount. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what a mutual fund is, okay. In a mutual fund, there is yeah. a fund manager. That is one factor that everyone looks for, okay, when you are about to invest in a mutual fund. that yeah. if your fund manager has been continuing the position or it's a new one yeah so mutual fund are just like that okay you give me money and i invest it whenever i wherever i see fit okay yeah and when you want to take out your money i'll just give you the, all the interest okay that yeah yeah, yeah. that's it that's yeah, the basic yeah, yeah, yeah. difference i got it i got it that really helps man <laughs> okay man that was yeah. great okay guys uh, i hope this session was helpful okay and really sorry guys we couldn't take all the questions okay considering Thanks, considering man. the time okay Yes, hey, thanks, Shreyans. So you know, like consider considering the time, okay? Because for the forty minutes he had a speech, and after that, you know, 
after that we were only allowed to have questions so okay guys uh just one more thing guys how many of you are actually you know indulged in trading intraday or just you know for the sake of growing your money you can just raise your hand okay okay guys so i'll just let you know uh, there is actually a good news okay like since after few days okay the itm bsc is actually about to start its own management club so i guess that is something you guys might be interested in okay uh, the nine people who are actually ah uh, man okay okay guys uh, it's time to leave see you guys later bye bye Ah uh, okay. yes, we'll share the details. Okay, we'll share the details using the student activity section. Okay. Okay, and guys. The management club. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You will. I guess. You will get information about that. This is the other question. Hello. Yeah. Mank, I want to ask that uh, I am BS Data Science a student of uh, May term. May th this May term. Okay. Foundational level student. I want to ask that I haven't joined any society. Okay. Uh, is there need to join the, any society? Ah, uh, see, you know, societies are there for to help you. Okay, to help you grow. Let's say you know you are interested in literature, so you might want to find people who are actually also interested in literature, right? Yes. So, like, what are you interested in other than your academics? I want to uh, join e-sports club society, but now uh, their registrations are turned off. Okay. What should I do? Okay, so you can join them as a member. Just yeah, email them. Okay, yeah. email them or just join them as a member. Okay. Uh, is wow. there any society for trading? Okay, not as not at this moment. Okay. Uh, because see, there is this one caveat regarding a society for trading. Okay, because let's say we make an informed decision and someone says, okay, because of your decision, we lost our money. So that is one reason why we couldn't actually form a club for trading. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, any more questions? Uh, Mayank, actually, yeah. I joined little late, so I want to know which app did sir recommend for trading, like for beginners. Uh, you know what I'll with? do. Okay, so what I'll do is see. Uh, sir didn't actually touch much into the trading tradings. Okay, like how you should trade, but what he touched into is how you should actually, you know, look the market, like which way the wind is flowing. Once you know that, you'll know how to. Make an informed decisions regarding your trades, like which to buy, whom to buy, and whom not to. Okay, yeah. Thank okay, you. and and about the session, okay, we'll share the live recording, okay, if that helps. Yes, yes, we'll share. We'll post in our uh, the ITMBS YouTube channel. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Please, my end up me. Um. Okay, that's the problem. I can't. Yeah. Say this. Stop. Uh, stop the recording now. Oh yeah.